Hi everyone, uh, my name is Rod McDonald. I'm an author specialising in writing books about diving shipwrecks. Some of my books that you might have heard of are Dive Scapa Flow, Dive Truck Lagoon, the Japanese Pacific World War II shipwrecks, and Dive Palau, the shipwrecks. So I'm here today to do a cover reveal for uh, my latest book, which is coming out in April uh, this year, 2018, and it's called Deeper Into Darkness. And it's really a sequel to uh, The Darkness Below, which came out in 2011. Uh, an accidental sequel, because I never thought I would write another book after The Darkness Below of this fashion. But uh, so much has happened in diving, and in, in my own particular diving, that I thought it was time to bring a lot of the stories from The Darkness Below bang up to date, and just tell uh, a few more bits and pieces about them. And The Darkness Below itself was a, a sequel to my first book of this type called Into the Abyss. Dive to Adventure in the Liquid World, which came out in 2003. Up until that point, I'd only ever written books about uh, manuals about diving particular sh shipwrecks, such as Scapa Flow and the like. And in 2003, Into the Abyss was my first attempt to write a book that was a collection of short stories about uh, all the adventures and daring do that I'd been involved in over the year. So The Darts Below was the sequel to, to Into the Abyss. I never thought I'd write another one. And now Deeper in the Darkness is the sequel to The Darts Below, and, it, and it's loosely and, and completely accidentally made themselves into a trilogy. So the, I've been hard at work on the book uh, during the course of 2017, uh, and now that we're really at the, the, the book's written and it's at the edit stage, we had to come up with a, a cover. So I had this uh, wonderful idea to shoot a cover of a diver in water, with the water level about here, just beneath the mask, and a dive boat in the background. So uh, with this idea in mind, I managed to prevail upon uh, Bob Anderson, who's the, the well-known skipper of the uh, dive boat, the MV Halton. Uh, Bob lives in Orkney, but his boat, the Halton, although does a lot of work in Scapa Flow, is often seen up and down the west coast of Scotland and in Shetland, and he goes across to Norway each year. Bob's been making a name for himself with his fine underwater photography and a lot of the other work that he's been doing in Scapa Flow of late. And here he is, Bob himself, with the Halton in the background. So Bob rashly agreed to uh, shoot the, the cover for me, and so we pencilled in a date towards the end of November uh, last year, 2017, when I would come up to Orkney with this grand idea in mind and we'd go and do the shoot. It was also an excuse for me to get four or five days uh, diving in Orkney as well. I've, I've been going up there for 30 years, uh, and not a single year goes past without me actually getting to Scapa Flow. So uh, I went up end of November, uh, arrived in darkness off the ferry from Aberdeen, clambered onto the boat, got all my dive kit onto the boat, got a good night's kip and the next morning we were off and uh, of course I always liked diving scatter flow so the first couple of days we just spent diving the scatter flow wrecks as normal. And then in the midweek on the Wednesday um, it was really blowy and the, the morning dive was marginal and having seen the conditions in the morning it looked like the afternoon dive was going to be off. So I said to Bob, now this is the time, let's go and do this. So we took the Halton uh, west from the middle of Scatter Flow across towards the island of Cava and uh, it was a northwest wind so the closer we got to Cava the more the, the seas settled and we went into a small bay in Cava uh, and thought this is it, it's perfect, let's go and get this done. So Bob and I got prepped and jumped into the water and uh, Bob did a little bit of work to get me in the right position so the light would be right. Um, and then we had to signal the, the dive boat to come in behind us so the, the boat would be in the, in the distance. So we um, finally got set up and Bob had to grab hold of me to get me the right distance away from the dome lens because it magnifies everything so much. And we took probably about 100 shots there in this little bay of Cava. And the one that's in the cover uh, is uh, the one that we finally selected. And the artwork, I think, has been done beautifully by my publisher, Squittles, as well. So here is the, the final cover. I really like this cover, uh, particularly because the angle we got the water across uh, my face. It's called a Dutch angle. We've got the Halton in the background on my right shoulder. But also you see under the water, you can see my, uh, my body, uh, my stage, bailout tanks hanging off, but also the clarity of the water in Scapa Flow. So all in all, I love the cover. I hope you like it, uh, and I thought it'd be nice for you to know the little backstory behind shooting it. Uh, as for the book itself, uh, it breaks down into three uh, books or sections. The first section is all about the, the famous World War I shipwrecks around the UK. 
It starts with the, the wreck of the Skype cruiser HMS Pathfinder in the 4th, uh, which was a torpedo by a German submarine at the very beginning of World War I, and has the misfortune to be known as the first uh, warship to be sunk by a locomotive or self-propelled torpedo from a submarine. Um, a famous, famous wreck in the, the 4th. And it covers other wrecks such as HMS Audacious off uh, the north of Ireland, which was the first British battleship to be sunk by a German mine at the beginning of World War I. The second section of the book uh, is a return to the Pacific, and I go through some of the more personal stories to diving in uh, places like Truck Lagoon, Palau and Guadalcanal. When you're writing books like Dive Truck Lagoon and Dive Palau, of necessity you've got to tell the history in a kind of a dispassionate way, and then my form is I go through each of the major wrecks and truck, there are 40, give a bit about the history of the wreck, bit about diving it today and uh, get the wreck illustrated. So you, you don't have much room in a, a big book like that to put in all the personal stories about the things you see and the things you do. So what I've tried to do in Deeper Into Darkness is to put in all these personal stories about what you see inside some of the wrecks in these places. And it covers uh, diving in Guadalcanal. Um, I've talked at the Australian Dive Conference and Exhibition Oztec uh, in Sydney for the last uh, two or three occasions and in March 2017 I was uh, talking there again and I always like to have a little adventure on the way back from Sydney towards Scotland and in, uh, in March I headed from Sydney up to Honiara uh, in Guadalcanal and the Solomon Islands and spent a fantastic week uh, diving with Talagi Dive there uh, going across Iron Bottom Sound and diving some of the famous wrecks there so I've just spoken a bit about diving in Guadalcanal the third section of the book is um, basically uh, the latest developments that are happening. So I cover some of the, the latest developments in diving at Scapa Flow. I bring up to date some of the stories about some of the shipwrecks I've written about previously, such as the SS Creamure, where uh, we'd had been contacted by the last living survivor of the Creamure, which was torpedoed in 1940 off our coast here in Scotland during World War II. Um, and this was the radio officer, Noel Blacklock, had got in touch and uh, he told us his whole story and I met Noel and became uh, very friendly with him, a lovely gentleman in his 90s uh, who sadly passed on last uh, October. So anyway, um, a few years ago my um, dive buddy Paul Haynes and myself found the bell of the Creamure and after much discussion agreed to lift it and go and uh, present it to Noel. So it covers you know, beautiful little stories such as that and sadly um, the book uh, also covers the terrible desecration of naval war graves that's been going on in the South China Sea, the Java Sea and Jutland, and particularly the Java Sea where a number of British, Australian, Japanese uh, and American uh, war wrecks filled with war dead uh, uh, and war graves uh, effectively uh, have been completely dismantled and removed from the seabed by illegal salvers. The, these shipwrecks, uh, naval shipwrecks, remain the property of the, the sovereign state uh, whose ships they were. And these salvers have no right whatsoever to be uh, dismantling and lifting these ships and desecrating the war graves of so many thousands of men. So that's uh, a brief intro to the book and how the cover was shot. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, my long-suffering publishers Whittles and I had agreed it would be a 210-page book and of course I seem to write more words than fewer nowadays and it's come in about 265 pages. So it's a big book uh, and it's the third in the trilogy. It should be out in Easter, all things being equal. Uh, so I hope you like it and thanks for listening. This is the cover uh, of Into the Abyss which is the first volume of the trilogy. Uh, it came out in 2003 and we are now uh, putting out a further edition of this which has been adjusted and updated. This is volume two of the series, The, uh, the Darkness Below. It really starts in the mid-1990s when uh, deep air divers such as myself got access to uh, helium uh, and also began to develop mixed gas diving techniques for deeper diving. It opened up uh, huge swathes of the, the seabed that were previously off limits for us because it was too deep as we found we were able to venture beyond the standard compressed air depth of 50 metres uh, to 100 metres, 150 metres for some uh, of the more bold. Um, and it covers all the adventures that we had along the way and all the virgin shipwrecks that this allowed us to find. And here are some of the other uh, covers for uh, my books. Dive Scapa Flow covers diving the 
remains of the German World War I High Seas Battle Fleet, the High Seas Fleet, which was scuttled on 21st June 1919 in Scapa Flow. All 74 ships of the German fleet went to the bottom of Scapa Flow, uh, and to this day, seven major warships remain three German battleships and four cruisers from World War I. There was also countless other wrecks there uh, to interest the diver. And Dive Scout Flow uh, was first published in 1990, and we've put out a sixth edition as a 100th anniversary edition to celebrate 100 years since the scuttling of the fleet in 1919. Dive Truck Lagoon uh, covers the famous uh, US Navy fast carrier raid on Truck Lagoon by Task Force 58. Nine carriers fielding more than 500 combat aircraft uh, launched a surprise air raid on Truck Lagoon and caught the Japanese shipping largely by surprise. Uh, there are now 40 major Japanese warships in the bottom of Truck Lagoon still filled with their war cargoes of tanks and trucks and torpedoes and bombs and shells. Six weeks after the uh, Task Force 58 raid on uh, Truck Lagoon in uh, 1944, the same task force then hit uh, the other great Japanese naval anchorage, Palau, a thousand miles to the west of Truck, and to this day there's 20 major Japanese uh, ships lying at the bottom of the Palau Lagoon. Uh, four Z shipwrecks uh, of the South China Sea, HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Repulse. It was uh, published uh, four or five years ago and covers diving um, these two famous British warships. HMS Prince of Wales was Churchill's newest and uh, most favourite battleship uh, and HMS Repulse was a World War I era battlecruiser that had been reconstructed in the 1930s. Um, they were sent to Singapore to deter Japanese aggression. It didn't work. The Japanese uh, invaded uh, the Malayan Peninsula the same day that they assaulted Hong Kong and of course at the same time as they assaulted Pearl Harbour with the famous raid. Uh, Force Z, as the, the squadron was called, were sent north from uh, Singapore 200 miles to repulse the Japanese invasion and they were targeted by 85 Japanese torpedo and high altitude bombers and sunk in the one action and the loss of the Prince of Wales defines the end of the era of the battleship and ushering in the era of air power at sea.